Good morning. We have Midlands Home Inspections got uh, breakfast out there for us. Is that right, Brooke? Yes. So grab breakfast now and come in or grab it later and I chat with you. So come on in and let's get this ball rolling. Beautiful day out there, isn't it? We are going to play a quick little video and then we're going to dive into some stuff. Um, I love those type of videos. For years and years, I always had as a part of my speeches when I travel around the country a simple acts of kindness, and it always reminds me of, of the good guy award we hand around. And some of you that have been around here for a long time have heard this story. Um, Gus, most of you guys know Gus. Gus without an arm. I was an agent here for a long time. And, and uh, Lynn, I think, right? Lynn currently was the person that had the good guy award and she walked in and she was having a bad day and she was getting a cup of coffee and Gus over his cube stuck his head up and said, Lynn, isn't it a great day today? And that positive, energetic, uh, uh, passion voice that Gus always had. And, and Lynn said, you know what? And she gave the next good guy award to Gus. She said, I was having a bad day. Nothing's going right. I was feeling sorry for myself. And then I just heard this positive voice of encouragement from Gus, and all of a sudden, it changed my mindset for the rest of the day. And, and that's what I've, I've always believed in my life. I, I always tell people that if we do five simple acts of kindness every single day, we can change our environment, our culture. It doesn't matter where we're at, right? It doesn't have to start in organizations with leaders. It can start with us and our team and our family and everybody. Because here's what I find that happens is when we do simple acts of kindness, right? When we help someone uh, uh, in the door, uh, we help them uh, when they're carrying things. 
we say, we, you know, we like what you're wearing. Buy uh, coffee for the person behind you at Starbucks or the meal behind you at, at um, McDonald's or something like that. Those simple acts of kindness, what they can do so many times is put the smile, put a smile on the face of those having a bad day, and that's contagious, right? When you all of a sudden make someone start feeling good about their day, that's contagious, and then they start positively reflecting on everyone around them. So I always believe that simple acts of kindness literally can uh, change a person's day, and, and it doesn't take any time at all. Alan Dalton, who many of you have heard us speak about, I was speaking in Florida, God, probably 10 years ago, and I was talking about simple acts of kindness, and Alan, in the middle of the speech, grabbed a bottle of water and brought it up to me. He says, I only got four left for the day. <laughs> so um, I was, um, uh, I'm Christian. At church, I saw a video that many of you have probably seen. Um, uh, if, if you're Christian, I would highly recommend you pull this video up. The video of the brother of the person, uh, uh, the black gentleman that um, uh, a white police officer was texting, walked into the wrong apartment, looked up, saw him. He was eating cereal in his apartment, and, and she shot him. And at the sentencing, um, it gives me chills to think about this, uh, the brother got up there and said, I forgive you. I love you. Um, and so I don't want to talk about it because I'll start crying, but uh, those of you that are Christians for sure, I would, I would Google that video. It is an incredibly powerful video. Um, and then I want, before we start off here, uh, Barb Baker, Barb Fletcher Baker, um, was one of the original seven owners of our organization. Uh, her funeral was yesterday. I still do not have exactly all the facts of what happened, but I think she, it, from what I best understand, she fell at her place, she hit her head, went to the hospital, had internal bleeding, and ended up passing away. She was only 68 years old, which is clearly not old enough to be passing away. So if we could keep her and her family uh, in our thoughts, um, I was talking to the staff yesterday, and I said, now with Maggie and Barb gone, there was no one that has left our organization that was part of the original people that came over day one of our organization. I'm actually the longest standing uh, person in the organization. I, no one's been here longer than me now. Um, and um, I was talking to the staff girls, and Kate says, I think that just means you're old. <laughs> I think I'm going to show her this video and show her what old is. These kids nowadays have no respect for us, do they? A um, lot of things to go over uh, today. <laughs> um, I think everyone's got these numbers. We're, we've got uh, quarterly numbers. I got to put my cheaters on because we're getting so many people on this list. We've got 87 people on this one, the top producer list. And again, we put the criteria down here of, you know, basically at this t through the third quarter. To be in that top producer list, you'd have to be at uh, seven and a half million in closed business. This is all closed business, by the way. In closed business, 37 closed units and 187,000 in closed GCI to make the list for any one of these columns. So we do rank it by volume, uh, by units, and by GCI. We don't put everyone's GCI numbers on there, but we put the rank on there so you can kind of tell where everyone's at. So uh, that's the one for the top producers that has everyone, including individuals on it. And then the other one, there was a mistake. Megan Owens had 23 more transactions, so she's got two more transactions than Ralph. <laughs> Kidding you, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love competitive people, don't you? <laughs> um, the other one's the individual, and you see again the criteria back at the bottom. We've already, we got 60 people on there, which is clearly more than we've ever had. And through the third quarter, you have had to close 3.75 million in uh, sales volume and 17 and a half in units and $93,500 for GCI. And we got 62 people on there for the GCI thing. So a lot of people having a great year. And I actually want to talk about the numbers. So a couple things. One is Scott has been so kind to take the past um, state of the economy letters in mastermind group after mastermind group after mastermind group. Someone's hammering on me to get this done. So I'm going to review this. We're going to probably make some tweaks to this. Uh, between Scott and I, and we'll get this out to you here in the next couple days. So um, hopefully this will be something you guys can utilize to send out to your farming area, to your center of influence, use for sellers to kind of tell them what's going on in the marketplace. And then um, we, on a, a regular basis, uh, do these graphs for you guys. Do I have these here? I apologize. Here, I, I got it. Apologize, guys. Um, we do two things. 
One is monthly, we're trying to get out, at least quarterly, but monthly we're even trying to get out these graphs, which one is the 500 plus unit uh, market share, which we have 52.5%. We truly believe that is over 60% market share. Uh, and the reason we believe that's over 60% market share, we have almost $400 million, 391, I think, because the number, is that right? $391 million of transactions that have closed this year that is not in MLS. To put that in perspective, $391 million, that is almost all upper end stuff, which is the reason we believe this number is much higher than 52.5% and or lots. It's not really much in the middle. Uh, to put that in perspective, um, Better Homes and Gardens, who's, who's the fourth in the marketplace, um, I don't have, this is just for the month, who's fourth in the marketplace, has $420 million, and we, I mean, we basically have almost the exact same amount as Better Homes and Gardens is reported in the entire marketplace in stuff that's not ever hit MLS yet. I mean, that's an overwhelming number of deals that are hitting. So when we do these market share numbers, we're, we're positive every one of these market share numbers are lower than what we're really performing at. Um, so then if we go to uh, the four graphs that we have, and these are all on, where are these at, Brooke? Daryl, someone tell me. They're all in the resource center? Resource page of the website under agent tools. Is that easy to get to? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm, do you guys all know where that's at now? If you don't, find Daryl, okay, right after this meeting. Or Kate. Um, so um, market share as of um, this report being pulled uh, on Friday, we have 44.2% of all the active listings. The next closest would be Dodge at 13.2%. In the metropolitan Omaha area, Dodge, Douglas, Sarpy, um, Washington, I'm missing something here, Cass County, um, we have 39.8% market share. That number, I'm very impressed with that number because we started out after February at 38.0% market share. So to be at 39.2% market share right now means we are continually to trend up. I thought at 38.0% after February, the number would probably go down. Because what we had is we had some trailing numbers of, of CBS agents that went to Dodge and Better Homes and Keller Williams and Nebraska Realty trickling into our numbers that we were going to lose and not getting moving forward. So even without those numbers, you guys have continued to kill it. In fact, when I, I've been tracking on a monthly basis, uh, last month we closed over 42% of, the, of the, the business, and the month before was 41.5%. So you're consistently hitting over 41% the last three or four months in the market share. So you're clearly outperforming the market. Uh, Douglas County, we have 43.4% market share, and in Sarpy County, we have 37.4% market share. So get these, and then this other chart that we have, this doesn't come out till the 15th, which is today. Mm -hmm. So we'll get these from the board, because we need board numbers. So again, we put, we put the pie charts at the top. We put all of our numbers here of what we're doing, and these are our actual numbers. These are, this includes all of the numbers that we have that are not hitting MLS um, for the Omaha area. Um, and so... You're going to look at these numbers, and then the, the Omaha market is right below that, and we pull those directly from the board. So the Omaha market, when they give us their numbers, it's a single count number, right? They don't count a list sale as two transactions. We count it as two transactions. So people are like, well, these numbers can't be correct because for pendings year-to-date, the entire market has 9,611, and we have 9,350. Where they are correct, to my point, is because we've added in to our numbers here, these are correct numbers, not just numbers reported to MLS. So that's the reason I continue to believe we have more market share than what these are reporting. So utilize these as vehicles to help you guys. These should be talking points when you get together. When it talks about the average sales price, you know, it went from 232 to 242. Um, it talks about that closed units year to date is down 7.4%. So when you're, you know, if you're that source of real estate and you're making these phone calls or coffees or lunches with your clients, grab these things and use these as a vehicle. To, on, on listing presentations and use these as a vehicle when you're talking to buyers and or sellers. Any questions about this? All right. Um, and then I promise we will get this out here uh, soon. Um, move. Maggie, do you, can you fill me in a little bit on this? Do you have any, on the move guru thing, do, could you maybe come up and talk? You're, you're not at all prepared and that's okay. But I think you know a little bit more than I do. So Move Guru, um, we're going to be getting hooked up here pretty soon. 
Um, I'm going to let Maggie explain it a little better than I do, but it's kind of like a concierge service where utilities, TV, all that type of stuff, they will hook up for our clients for free. Yes. So, so they will, um, I believe there's a dashboard where your clients can log in. They can basically enter their current address where they're moving to, and it will, I guess, display available services in their area and help kind of facilitate utilities, uh, internet, cable transfers, DISH, DirecTV, whatever they want. Um, and then I believe you can also add some of our preferred vendors in there as well. That's my understanding. Yep. So, and uh, we have a call on it tomorrow to get a lot of the details. So it's, it's one of a couple of vendors out there that's trying to help facilitate the move. Um, and they're like, there's no charge to the agent. There's no charge to the consumer at all. So the other thing that I do know that they're going to do is like, they're going to Home Depot. I don't know. Don't hold me to these companies, but Home Depot's Men uh, Menards, places like that. And Chris Stewart has told us they're going to the Nebraska Furniture Mart, Dairy Queen, to get these Berkshire Hathaway companies and other companies as part of this process to start sending out discounts to our clients. So these things are, are working together at the same time. So that, I think, is going to be cool. This is going to give us a competitive advantage, I believe, in the marketplace when we get these type of things. And we keep talking about concierge services. And I, uh, for my Mavericks meeting, kind of even have an updated sheet on concierge services that we can hand out in all of our mastermind groups and get that out to everybody. Um, so. so coming soon. Coming soon. Thank you, guys. Um, Move Guru. G-R-U-R. <laughs> Brooke spelled it G-R-U-R. I'm like, I'm like, well, I love you as you spell as bad as I do. <laughs> Makes me feel good about myself every now and then. <laughs> what do you get when you get two people that can't spell a word, a misspelled word? <laughs> um, so the last two weeks, I was in um, uh, D.C., Washington, D.C., for um, Realty Alliance meetings, um, and I'm not sure if we'll continue down that path. I didn't find as much value as that as I do. Uh, what I was last week, I was in Michigan for our Maverick meetings, and that's a group of about 10 or 11 brokers. We come and um, we visit each other's organizations. These guys put an incredible amount of work into this. This is, they have a little cut out of Michigan, because they're in Michigan and Indiana, of their floor plan. And then this is the book. So Maggie, just so you can be excited, this is what we'll be putting together for 15 people. I'm like, oh my God, you guys own a print shop? Um, but it was interesting. It's always interesting to me to look at different companies and see how they're different than us. This is a company that has like 100 more agents than we do, but they have 52 offices. They have 52 offices. And their, their home office is in Grand Rapids. And Grand Rapids is very similar to Omaha. But they don't focus on Grand Rapids, which is 800,000 people, same metropolitan size as Omaha because they said, well, it's too competitive in that market. And so one of the things we went back to them says, listen, you, know, you keep chasing these five to 10 person offices all over the place. You know, the best place to grow is you've already got, they've got this incredible office. Their office is crazy beautiful, just got done with it. I was crazy impressed with it. Um, they would be, it's only 11,000 square feet, but they'd be the only people that I would say would even rival us when it comes to coolness of offices. I was very impressed with it. I'm like, you've got your infrastructure in place. Everybody that you add to this is gonna drop to the bottom line. So it's just interesting for us to sit down and help and look at their leadership team and their culture and, and, and how they do things. And it's just, their entire growth pattern has been total opposite ours. Ours has been organic one at a time outside of this CBS home merger thing. And theirs has been, you know, 15 acquisitions over the last 10 years uh, to get them to a point where they've got 1,050, 1,100 agents. Um, Gino was in the meeting and he has monthly board of directors meetings with uh, Greg Abel, Who's, who's really took over Warren Buffett's job uh, as, as CEO. Um, the head of the energy company, company is at Bill Furman, I believe. And he said, it's just interesting, uh, you know, they give reports back on what their corporate uh, board is. And the corporate board has Bill Gates on it, has Tim Cook on it, obviously has Warren Buffett on it. You know, probably one of, if not the most powerful board of directors uh, in the world. And it was just interesting to listen to Gino talk about Bill Gates you know, he's talking to an energy company, you know, that's sitting on a big part of the board, which is where Greg Eagle comes in, and, and one of his large, biggest concerns is global warming. So, I mean, I'd love to be in the room and hear these conversations when Bill Gates is talking about global warming. You've got energy companies sitting there. Uh, and he also said that Bill Gates' uh, biggest concern was that, you know, he's like, it, it runs in his family, I guess, dementia, stuff like that. He's like, you know, he 
ability not to think just scares him to death. And so I just thought it was kind of interesting to listen to some of those type of things. I mean, Brian, I think you've already got it, right? Early well, stages at least. <laughs> 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 so, um, but it was just, you know, it, it's, to me, I love going to those places and I did share, we've got some packets of some things, some apps and some other things people are doing that we'll dive into and figure out. Um, you know, that's kind of where Move Guru came out of was these meetings the last two weeks, is what are things that we can utilize to help you guys to grow your business, to better serve our clients and, and to continue to move forward here. And, and so I love, I don't really love doing those things, but I love the takeaways of, of helping us be able to come back and improve uh, what we're doing as we continue to move forward. The, the other thing that we really took out of this is we all went around the room and talked about our markets. It's pretty universal. The upper end existing market in every single market from coast to coast seems to be very slow. Uh, low inventory seems to be very consistent all over the country. Uh, and numbers across the country, if we went around the table, there was not a single market that spoke there in that group where their market for closed units this year was higher than it was last year. And I just said, you know, we were down 7.4% year to date on closed units. So it really feels like what we're seeing and feeling here in Omaha is being filled pretty much across the United States. So. Uh, the, the last part of kind of going over the numbers is I track every day new pending transactions. And those of you in mastermind groups have heard this. Heather's heard this probably eight times now, so she's probably like, Jesus, talk about something new. Um, but we, I want you guys to always understand where the market is, where we believe it's heading. And much, in, to much surprise to us, um, we sold new pending transactions, 235, I think is where we ended up less transactions, new pendings in September than we did in August. Now, I've been tracking these numbers for 15 to 20 years, and that surprised me because historically, August will be a little slower than September. After Labor Day, there's usually a pick back up. It, but, you know, you got August, you got kids going back to school, you got vacations, things like that that typically slow that down. So to see us, now, uh, we had a really good August, better than normal. Um, and really, the only thing I can even think of is that if you look, you know, March is way worse than normal because of the floods and the extended winter, I believe. The only thought is maybe, you know, what was typically, you know, March got pushed to April and everything can get pushed a little bit back and, and maybe September's or August. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me because you didn't get rid of the vacations and kids getting back in school. We are seeing a slight pickup right now of, of listings and of activity. So we'll keep you guys abreast of that, but we want to keep on top of things. But we are seeing across the board in mastermind groups and conversations we're having price reductions even under 250, even under 200, that they're staying on the market for extended periods of time. We're getting price reductions on those. That clearly was not the situation. Part of what, uh, and Scott sent this out before, part of what will come out of this um, state of the economy letter is a graph that Scott ran, which says you can kind of tell that you know, the peak months were all delayed here a little bit this year versus last year. So we're gonna try to continue to get you guys as much data as humanly possible to make you as knowledgeable as anybody in the marketplace. So when you're talking to your clients that you can basically give them information, be that valued source of what's going on in the marketplace. Any questions about any of that stuff? Is that coming to us or did you pass that out? We're, we've, we've gave that to everyone but Gail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We knew that you really wanted it, Gail, so we were going to make you beg for it. <laughs> this is coming. I'm going to, I need to, I need to. So, so a couple things. One is, <laughs> don't mess with me. <laughs> um, these, these, these are already out for September. This will be coming out in the next couple days. An update one. This is an August one. And this will be coming up. I just want to go through this, tweak this a little bit. This will be coming out in the next couple of days. So we, those will all be there. And Daryl, again, these, will these all be the same place? Should be. We can get them there. Okay. All right. So we'll get those there for everybody. Um, Heather, you want to talk a little bit about the open house? <laughs> well, Heather, can you? <laughs> Not do you want to. Talk a little bit about the Council Bluffs open house. Uh, we have remodeled that space, talked a little bit about it. You've actually, I think, even went and bought some pictures and furniture. And it depends if you guys like it or not. Yeah. I like it, then I bought it. But um, on Thursday night, we're going to have an open house for the grand reopening, kind of, of the remodel of the Council Bluffs office from Looks 5 totally to 7. Um, I think we've got some appetizers and cocktails provided, so if you guys can come, please do so. Um, should be kind of a nice, new, refreshing 
look to the council bluff office. And if you know somebody or an agent in that area, bring them with and tag them along with you and have yeah. them come with you. If not, yeah. bring your kids, family, whatever. And then also, I sent out an email to the Iowa agents. On October 23rd, they are doing a um, like a revitalization summit over there in Iowa, and you'll get some free CE hours for it too. So there's a link that I sent to all of you that you can RSVP for. If not, I've got some flyers around the office too. So so we've we've recarpeted over there. We put new ceiling tiles in there. We put new light fixtures over there. We now have doors like those right back there, the eight-foot right. doors over there with side lights. We've repainted the trim black. I mean, it looks very it's cool. It's definitely a, a nice facelift that it needed. Yes. So it Redid helped. the sign on the exterior. Yep. So the artwork should be so delivered you, Wednesday along with some tables around the new furniture. So hopefully it should look really nice for the grand opening on Thursday. Yeah. So, so again, if you're in Council Bluffs, you shouldn't now be embarrassed if you take our clients over there, which right. you might have been before. It was pretty bad. Um, but again, we now have, I believe, FOBs working to Council Bluffs, to Regency, to Sarpy in here. So if you've got a FOB, it should be able to get you into any of those buildings. Correct. Maggie, it, is it now working on all those copiers also? So, so your FOB should get you into any of the copiers or any of the, those offices. So please, please utilize those spaces. Uh, last update on Sarpy County. Um, uh, Jennifer's down there doing a great job. We will, our, this keeps getting delayed. Uh, my last meeting with Brian Hartman, who represents Jerry Torzon in our new space down there on 100th and 307th and 370, is that right? 108th, okay, and 370. Is, it's probably not going to get done until December 1st. So we were hoping August 1st and September 1st, and so um, I'm like, it's got to get done uh, uh, December 1st. So as soon as we get that open, we'll get people down there too. That will not have a manager there, kind of like Council Bluffs. You know, it's going to be no receptions, but uh, come. Uh, stop in there. There's going to be a couple conference room there. It'll be a very cool office also. So we're excited about getting that open for you. Um, Heather's only one week into her training class on Thursdays. So those of you who have not done that, I know we've got, I know we got Joe Westerhouse has got a class going. I know we got uh, Gary Carpenter's got a class going. I know we got a lot of classes going and this is the time of year. We want that to happen. But please, if you've missed the first one, you still got five weeks, nine to eleven on Thursdays. The speaker I heard is spectacular this week. Can you tell me who that is? It's Vince Leafy. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think she does so well? <laughs> I don't know if he can be. He'll be there at ten. <laughs> so there's a speaker, Ralph. Ralph, I think I saw Ralph leave here. Ralph was a speaker last week. I heard he did a great job. So we've got. There's a speaker in every one of those sessions, but it's really about getting you out of your comfort zone, and it's all about prospecting and continue to grow your business because we know human nature tells us, right, that as we head into these slower times of years, as the, as the weather gets colder, we head into the holiday seasons, people, the business slows down, and as the business slows down, we then naturally want to slow down, and that's the worst thing to do, right? Because we always talk about in all these mastermind groups and goal setting is October 1st. Where are we, where are we in 2020, right? October 1st is the beginning of the new year. Because the prospecting, the business growth, uh, revenue generating activities we do today is going to determine how next year starts out. So it's not, to, it's not really to finish this year strong. It's really to make sure that we start next year strong. So please pop those classes, whether you're in the first one or not. If you can only make three or four of them, we want you to be in every one of those. And I think the room was pretty full last time yeah, already. The speakers start around 10, 10, 10. Speakers start halfway through. So 9 to 11 is the whole class of speakers. If you want to pop in just for the second half of it, you can pop in there at 10 and, and listen to them also. Um, Joe, I might call on you Gerke here in a second. Um, I went down to the Real Estate Commission, what was that, two, three weeks ago, Joe, Joe on a Thursday, uh, to talk about social media. You guys know, we've talked about this till we're blue in the face um, in the conversation, and then I, I didn't stay there to, to see if there was follow-up to that, so I'll let Joe, maybe let's get him a spe uh, microphone. But went down there to talk about social media, that you know we've got this ongoing problem here uh, with that we can't meet by the letter of the word the Real Estate Commission's guidelines that the broker's name has to be next to the agent's name or the team name. And if you've got a tagline up here on Snapchat and or Instagram, there's only 30 characters, and the name Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Ambassador Real Estate takes up all 30 characters, so you're not going to put the name in there. And then you've got a, a post, and then you have verbiage starting down below. So we gave a number of suggestions of one is an overlay, uh, you know, with the agent's name and the broker's name next to it on the, on the photo, um, making the very first words when you start down there, uh, and we did get approval. Again, we have approval with the Secretary of State and the Real Estate Commission for, B, for social media only for B-H-H-S-A-M-B, or B-H-H-S um, Ambassador Real Estate, I think is what we've got uh, approved from them. So you can go ahead and do that. And so, so layover, we're suggesting. First, so we've been, this is what we've been telling you guys to do. The first, few, the first line below the post 
or if you can, and you're not going to tag the location, tag the location of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services and Bass Real Estate, and that will go right below. And you can do that in a different location, but if you want to tag the location you're in, that part doesn't work. So we're hoping, I guess, Joe, can you give me, did you guys, I don't know if you guys even discussed it. They, you did, didn't discuss it after we left. Maybe your input on this or your thoughts is one vote. Okay, so what you accomplished, Vince, was... Probably nothing. No, a lot. <laughs> now the, both the commission and the director understand the problem a lot better. And the problem was they didn't understand the problem and they didn't know what they were trying to fix and they kept going after people non-compliant. So problem being, you're sitting at your desktop and you post something and you're supposed to have your identification on every clickable page and it just can't be that way. Um, so when, you, when somebody opens it up on their phone, uh, it, it doesn't show. Uh, that's only one of the problems. You helped them understand that um, that can't be. So, um, yeah, you did move the needle a little bit. And, 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 we, and I think, you know, we're like, this is going to be a moving target because here's what we know. Two years from now, there's going to be something else with social media or technology that we haven't even thought of. And I think that was part of the suggestion. The conversation back and forth is we've almost got to use common sense, and there probably has to be an ongoing situation somehow some way where we continue to look at these type of things and say what's practical because I think I, I believe I said we're not going to change Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat to change their rules for us in Nebraska. We talked about an ongoing task force which Good. I volunteered to, to sit on Good. Uh, just so we know and we can report in these meetings. Thank you. I appreciate it. So again though any of you Using Instagram, Snapchat, social, social media, please do make sure that you're getting the broker's name on there. I, I'm going to say in some manner, some way, um, not at the very end of the post. That's what's going to probably get us in trouble. But kind of if you could follow those three rules that we have right now, I think that's defendable for us if a complaint got taken up against it. But you've got to get it on there somehow, some way, because you've got lots of these complaints going on on a regular basis. Any questions about that? I know we've beat this to death for... I believe, I mean, I really think I've been talking to Greg about this for four or five months. It seems like forever. And, it, you know, at one time he basically said, I don't really understand it. And I'm like, that's not helping my situation here. <laughs> one last point. Really happy to report that the Gurkey Group is finally compliant. <laughs> 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 we have all kinds of problems. But we have people who are trying to be compliant. Well, Brooks, we have people trying to be compliant. So, again, if you have any questions about something you're doing and if a post – you think it's going to get you in trouble or not, I'm going to give you what I think is defendable on our part, may not be what would meet the Real Estate Commission rules right now. Is that criteria posted anywhere? Is the criteria posted anywhere? No, the criteria that I'm saying, no, let's, well, let's make sure we'll, we'll spell that out. My, the criteria is the broker's name's got to be connected to the agent's name, and that's just not working on social media right now. So by the letter of the law, what we're telling people we think is acceptable is really not acceptable in their eyes, but we're, I, I think they're taking a little easier post until we can get a solution on this. One question I have, and I've been shying away a little bit from social media because of it, but if we have a client that posts something that tags us that's related to the sale of their home... Say, so say that again, Joe. So if we have a client that posts something that is related to the sale of their home and they tag us on it, um, are we required to go in there and... Or, and or have them modify a post like because that's I mean that's where you so if a client really tags us yeah absolutely I don't think time. we have an obligation if someone tags us to it's go in and change anything there that's that's not your doing okay it's when you're posting something that it, that you really have control over someone tagging you or, or stating something about you in a post is is not you didn't post that so I don't I don't have any heartburn of that I don't see how it would, it, to me, it would be. Well, I was going to say that would be a, yeah. nearly impossible. So I have no I votes, the... but to me, it would be, it would be unreasonable to expect you to go figure out every time someone's tagged you in something. I mean, I don't go on social media but like once a month, so I could be in trouble all the time if someone tagged me on something that didn't have Berkshire Hathaway right. next to it. It would be, I think, that's an unreasonable thought. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions on that? We hope that we're getting closer to a uh, understanding on that. That's Makes sense for everybody? Okay. Um, Scott. Well, Trevor, I'll let you go first. Trevor, you want to talk for a second here about dot loop for teams? I know we've got a handful of people. We'd like to get more people signed up for that. I'm going to give you a couple minutes on that. So as a lot of you know, my background was in uh, process automation. Um, it's a fancy way of saying ambitiously lazy. <laughs> I have two versions. Uh, I will outwork anybody so I don't have to work. 
Um, so I get lots of systems, programs, processes, outsourcing, all kinds of things to automate all of the muck that I don't want to actually spend my time doing. Uh, one of the things I've been doing for two years is I've been using this. We all have dot loop, but there's also another product called dot loop for teams. So anybody that's got uh, a partnership, two of you, uh, a transaction coordinator or an entire team, if you want to be able to have standardized documents that have your own team wording in them as part of your templates and you can then speed up the listing or contract writing processes, or if you want um, a repository of documents that your team can pull from, uh, that's in the dot loop team layer. If you have uh, if you want to start adding custom fields behind the scenes to like the view details screen, so you want to start tracking source or you want to start tracking a commission percent, uh, you now have the ability to do that. And uh, you can use uh, APIs, computers talking to computers, okay? You have dot loop talking to Google Sheets and it automatically loads any changes you put in dot loop into this Google Sheet. So what that means is you change a drop down in dot loop to under contract status and all of a sudden your Google Sheet switches to pending and your pending report that's already set up and reading all of your stuff changes automatically and instantly. So you don't have to do any more copy pasting over into uh, these, uh, these different master spreadsheets or tracking sheets or reporting. It can all just be driven off of dot loop. And, uh, and I did a, a class um, two weeks ago for anyone that was already on the platform or wanted to get on the platform, anything like that. And I just basically shared all the trips and all the tips, uh, tricks, secrets, things that I've done for the past couple years because I know that um, data analytics is not real prevalent in our industry. And so I thought I would <laughs> do a favor and, and help out and share some of that. And so um, it's a, it can be pretty simple. I can put people in contact with the, with the right companies and all that. Uh, no, I don't have the ability to support everyone, but you do get a dot loop person that will help you and I'll gladly show you uh, anything that I've done and anything that I've, I've learned along the way. Um, and then uh, uh, I also have a video recording of that session that I did also. So I could send you that if you guys are interested. But we've got basically, I, for two years I was paying $400 a month and it was worth it. it. Saved all this time. I finally had my life back. I could do all this stuff. Well, we now have a uh, broker rate at 80 bucks a month. So by far. Daryl, are you facilitating getting those signed up? So please, yeah, please grab Daryl if you want to uh, get on that platform. And let me know if you have questions. Thank you. Scott. Scott here? No, he's in Memphis still. Well, how the hell is he going to talk about these two subject matters then? <laughs> Who would like to stand in and act like Scott? I'm an attorney, and you can't do that. No. <laughs> Isn't that what our attorneys tell us all the time, Brian? How stupid are you? <laughs> um, so he's going to, I don't have as much information. There is going to be a... We're still trying to get a second one that we're having some debates with uh, home services about, but there is going to be November 1st, a medical insurance offering being rolled out. Um, we're still trying to get a second one, which is an assurance program versus an insurance program. Um, I've had a number of conversations with that, so we hope to get that done in the next 30 days too. And they'll hit different groups. They're not one's gonna be perfect for everybody or the other. So we're hoping if we can get options out there, that's good. So um, when Scott's back, I'll let him go through that and give us more details on that because he's been handling that for me. And his other, his other statement here was, remember, you know, what we post on Facebook, on our private Facebook page isn't as private as we would think. Those posts are sent outside, to outside parties. And, and I will tell you firsthand, I know that because I get them sent to me or text to me or calls to me. So when you think that our private Facebook page, if you're talking about things outside of here, you need to be careful about what you're saying because next thing you know, somebody all of a sudden uh, sees those. One of the things to a point that I had is we were leaving on there people that have left the company we do, did we go in there and fix that? Yeah. So we need to make sure that we've scrubbed those people out of there. Yep. Um, out. They're gone. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> um, well, that was part of that kind of... Why don't you go over Trunk or Treat for us? Um, yes, Trunk or Treat, you guys, Thursday the 24th. So our underground parking garage, this is so fun, um, turns into like this whole Halloween. We have 15 different uh, cars that dress up their trunks. Uh, gives an, it's, so it's a week before Halloween on the 24th, gives the kids another excuse to wear their costume. And it's underground, so it'll be heated. We're going to have a chili cook-off and hot dogs. And so we do need a couple more chili. Jay, Are we having a Lisi? contest for chili? Yes. Yeah, so, Jay, we need some chili cookers, a couple more. I'll so we'll, Okay, right. so One, we're voting. Two, three, 
Four. Whoa, Christy, you write this. Oh, down, see? Bro. Okay, Joe. Um, and Christy, you're getting all those? So we're Jennifer having a Joe. couple different contests. So Ralph Marasco, I think, has four different uh, trunk, trunks that he's going to do. We're going to have... Four of his 27 cars. Of, yeah, so... Don't then, give me shit about my cars, guys. <laughs> and then through the back, we've had ATS and Briley team. Um, they are not this year, but have had haunted tours. So we're going to have a haunted trail that goes out by the back of our building. And anybody's doing that, no smoke machines, because we were here till yes. one in the morning with the fire department that night, okay? <laughs> that was not fun. And they had one time they told us we have to stay all night. <laughs> So, and I guess I just, we had re got reached out by Omaha Sports Club, and so there's going to be kids, but really invite your family, your friends, niece, nephews, anybody, kids. Um, it's a good time. Who's been to that so before? Come to full, full cost. Yeah, it's please, please good. come. It's a good event. Who, have we had a salesman since we had the grill off? Yeah. Yes. We did? Yeah. I don't. I mean, it's been. Maybe. I don't know. So the grill off, uh, Julie, did I see Julie in here somewhere? Uh, Julie and... Um, her husband won by one vote over Chris Beaton. I see Chris Beaton and Bryant here. Uh, it, I would tell you, Brooke loves, I think Brooke loves, I think she thinks she's an event planner. That's what, <laughs> at least that's what she wants to be. She loves this part of it, right? Yes, they do. But, you know, show up to these things. And it's good just to get together and socialize with each other, have a drink, uh, have some food. Uh, but we would encourage you, please, please, on the trunk or treat, get there. And again, the date on that? Is the 24th. 24th. Um, and then stay tuned because next month we'll also be going down to the Open Door Mission as a crew. For around the Christmas holidays, we'll be doing some other stuff. So right. just keep that in mind. So I don't have really anything else on the agenda. Is there any questions anybody wants to answer? Or <laughs> Is there any questions that you want to ask? <laughs> that, what's a vegetarian? <laughs> and and just, those who, those who were not here last time, I still not lived down the lady in the coma four years and saying, wouldn't it be horrible to be a vegetarian, which I actually think it would be horrible to be a vegetarian. But, uh, oh my God, Shannon has told everybody that we went out and socialized with how stupid I am. <laughs> like they didn't already know. Yes, Gail. On that, on that medical plan, I know you said it's going to launch November 1. Yes. Um, all other medical companies are launching November 1. So, um... Uh, is there a time frame for that enrollment? That, that's, we need to get some information from Scott, and we'll get an email out to everybody on that. The question is on the medical plan launching November 1. I do know that that's a qualified plan. That's the reason we're still trying to get this assurance plan still done, um, that you do have to qualify for that plan, but it, but it is group rates. So we will have, let's ask Scott to get us an email out detailing what needs to be done, how do you go in that, why do we find out about the plan. I would hope that we're bringing someone in here to talk about it that people could at least find out what's going on with that. Any other questions? Yes. So the franchise is rolling out their new CRM, and that has the app with it yep. through Salesforce. Yes. Um, oh, oh, and talking about that, Missy, um, we've got AdWorks coming in here again. 29th and 30th. I will tell you, one of the things, every meeting I'm going to with Berkshire Hathaway people across the country, they love AdWorks, and they're, they're struggling as we are, getting as much engagement as they want. So we're bringing them in again after... The 29th and 30th. 29th and 30th. Now, did we, did we end up with this one? Saying we're going to have kind of a beginner class and then more of an advanced class? Yep, so we have a beginner, intermediate, and an advanced class. Um, you can register on Eventbrite for whichever sessions you want to attend. We'll have So those of you in the back, there's going to be three different levels of classes, beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes for those. So is there three each day? Yes. There's three each day. Please get in here, look at that, utilize that, because, again, I think I told you, what are they? What I tell you, they're burning two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month, or it's, yeah. it was a crazy amount of money, and and they're not going to continue to do that if we can't get usage out of this uh, and get people to do that. But the people that we've talked about utilizing it really are ninety nine percent of the people. Uh, there's this rare occasion I'm hearing someone that's not liking, but I mean I'm getting way way more positive comments. Uh, are you using it, Cindy? Yes. Yeah. So I you know get engaged, get in the classes, uh, look at this, and, and and utilize these type of things to increase your exposure and the sellers think as a general rule that you're a rock star. Uh, any other questions? What yes. What time are those classes? They're going to be, there's, it's, that's online? Um, yeah, so I think it's 2, 3, 15, and then 4, 30. I can go ahead and post it. We'll, we'll post it. We'll send, out, let's, we'll send out an email from me maybe on that, and then we'll post it so you guys have that, okay? Ideal estate. 
ideal estate. I I'm getting no inundated with invitations, supposedly from other agents, but I don't recognize any of the names. So I just I, I do have to tell them. you guys, um, we get all of us employees from Berkshire Hathaway Energy get phishing tests every single week. And um, there, and so I was in D.C. They, they rejected my credit card in the taxi. They rejected my credit card at the hotel. Um, I guess I was over my limit, right? It wasn't me, yeah. No, I'm not saying it wasn't you. Uh, Brooke didn't take me over. Um, and then there was something, then there was something then on a, a college thing. So I was having these issues. And then as I was traveling back, I got a phishing test from Berkshire Hathaway saying that um, our um, Netflix. Netflix uh, the credit card had been rejected for that. So I sent it over to Shannon. I'm like, <laughs> Take care of this. Well, she opens it up, says, uh, that was a test. <laughs> and so then I was getting on a plane I wasn't thinking about. It, and then Brooke, like two hours later, says, don't open up the Netflix thing. I'm like, too late. And then Scott did it. And so I'm like, you know, I, I don't know what our, our test results going to be. We're getting the next day or two. But we did really, really bad. People, You mess with people's Netflix, they open up the <laughs> attachment. <laughs> But, but on a serious note about that, what we have come to learn, which we obviously didn't follow last week, is that you know, don't open up those attachments or those links in the body of this thing because that's where someone all of a sudden is going to, and you're not going to get a result back saying, oh, you've been, uh, you failed a test, okay? You're going to have someone in there that's now going to have access to all of your information and your email. So be cognizant of this because this is a world where as much as we thought this was really crazy a year or two ago, there's way more of this uh, hacking going on than ever. And again, that is the one thing that we really, really, really like with our errors and emissions at $15 a month. We have cyber fraud hacking on that. As long as you are using the Berkshire Hathaway email, if you're, if you're, and if you're taking a team email and pushing it in and out of that, you're not covered. And I would highly recommend you would go get your own coverage on that. Because again, the laws are set up right now is if your email's hacked into and somebody transfers money uh, uh, one of your clients somewhere uh, and you're involved, you've got liability in that thing. It's, it's just a hot mess. So please do be aware of that and, and do kind of check to see, you know, if the verbiage seems weird in this thing, because a lot of times it's, it's people in other countries that are trying to do this. Did you say you did encourage us to get our own coverage? If you are using the Berkshire Hathaway email only, you've got errors and emissions through us. If you, are, if you have a separate email that you're floating things in and out of that, email account on, then you need to get your own coverage. And, that, and your coverage, you know, we're $15 a month, $180 a year for errors and emissions, with that included. It, it's going to cost you $450, $500 to go get $250,000 worth of... $1,000 a year. I priced it. It's, 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 it's way more expensive than what... How much volume you do, and we said at the time, $30 million, $9,000. Yeah. So there, there's my point is, you can't... The $15 a month, I was shocked our rate didn't go up to like $20 a month last year, to be honest with you, because of because of that cyber fraud insurance policy keeps getting more expensive and expensive. So please, please use ours or go get your own. But it's going to cost you thousands of dollars. It's going to cost you a whole lot, it's going to cost you a whole lot more than the $180 a year for your entire air emissions coverage we have. Yes. Any other questions? Anyone? Anyone want to give a five-minute motivational uh, speech? Good guy. Good guy. Anyone who walks up here does a good five, and if it's good, I'll give you $100. Good guy. $200. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you going to give a motiv <laughs> All right, we're gonna. This is the first time ever, and then we're gonna get a raise of hands if it sucks or not. So get up here. <laughs> All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing? This is a first. This is a first. You got five minutes. Go. I didn't hear you guys. How you doing? All right, we're having a Tuesday, aren't we? Hey, it's a pretty good meeting. Everyone, put introduce your left yourself, hand up. First of all, introduce yourself. Put your me. left hand up. We don't have time for introductions. Left hands. Come on, reach, reach them up, reach them up. All right, put them down. Take a breath. Get your right hand up. Get it way up there. Come on, reach. I want you to reach. All right, put them down. Take a breath. All right, guys. That's what we're doing. We're reaching. We're taking a lot of deep breaths, doing the things we do every day. And everybody's here. It's good to see everybody. We had a great uh, breakfast. Thank you. And a really great presentation. I really liked the video this morning about touching people. Not in the, not in the weird, <laughs> creepy sense. Not in the weird, creepy sense, but doing something positive, doing something kind. And when you're doing that kind of stuff, 
take a minute and do something positive and kind for yourself too. You know, a little self-care. Do something good. Do something healthy. Do something make, that makes you feel nice. All right. We're going to stretch now. Let's everybody stand up. <laughs> stand up. Let's do something that makes you feel good. Stand it up. Three minutes. Okay, ready? <laughs> both, both hands up. Here we go. Both hands. Reach them up. Come on, reach, reach. Okay, put them down. <laughs> Take a deep breath. <sighs> All right, turn and shake your uh, neighbor's hand somewhere over here. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you, everybody. All right, you guys feeling the smiles? You feeling the love? You guys feeling motivated? All right. A smile, that's positivity. Take it going forward. Have a great day, guys. My name's Jay Herzog, Hat and Boots. See you guys. Hold on, hold on. That, that was not five minutes, but is that, is that, worth, is that worth $200? I'll be, I'll be here every Tuesday for that kind of money. Good, good, good guy. Good guy award. Good guy award. Good guy award, Brooke. Andrea, good guy award. Look, we lost half the room after that motivational speech. I would like to give the good guy award to an ambassador that comes from a place of abundance. Um, they are all over our team Facebook page, always willing to help everyone out. If you need a pest control guy, if you need an electrician, if your husband backs into your garage door, <laughs> this person is my first phone call. That really happened. Um, and so I think this person is just super wonderful, the source of the source, and that's Mary Mueller. All right, guys, get in Heather's class, keep prospecting face-to-face. -face. The low interest rates is an excuse to call your clients, not an excuse to not call them. Let's stay in touch. Let's make sure we end the year strong and we start next year strong. Get ready for the trunk or treat. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.